cool. Dr. Khan, it's always good talking to you, man. I always enjoy our conversations. Thank you so much, man. How you doing, Vlad? I'm doing okay, man. You know, I'm just trying to like make sense out of the uh, all of the information that's coming in about the pandemic. And, you know, it seems like right now we're in a brink of kind of like there's a big debate happening whether the country should reopen or stay in quarantine, shut down. I wanted to get your opinion on it as a doctor, obviously, and, and kind of from your experience, what do you, what do you think about the whole, the whole madness that's happening? So un unfortunately, it is being politicized. You know, it's unfortunately it is. And, and the problem with, with it's, it's incredible world, it's not just America, it's a world problem. I am, I'm an internal medicine expert. I'm not, I'm not a public health expert. You have to, when you're talking to doctors and people, you have to understand who you're talking to, right? So Dr. Fossey is a infectious disease expert. These are public health experts. I'm an internal medicine doctor. I'm in primary care. I've created testosteronology and I've transitioned from primary care into taking care of men on steroids. So that's what I do. With that said, I understand what's going on with this. And unfortunately, it's all about data. Vlad, it's all about data. And the data, <clears throat> we're so myopic, Vlad, which means we're looking at it so closely, we don't have, we're going to be able to look back at this a year from now, several years from now, and get a better understanding. What I, I'll give you my take on it. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's, it's a, you know, virus. It's not like the flu virus, although it has some similarities for how it kills people. The old, someone who's old and who's Who's, who's compromised and fragile and and it, it apart from the flu virus which does kill children this doesn't but it can hurt everyone so we don't know the data Vlad it's it's been it's been unbelievable I'm seeing so much depression from this I could tell you this that we we don't know it looks like it's getting better I'm close to New York like you I'm in Connecticut we've been locked down you know we go to Florida every month and we came back from Florida the first week in March. We've been locked down ever since. Fortunately, I'm I'm set up for telemedicine, so I've been cranking uh, even more than I usually do because men on testosterone and steroids and medical issues, we've been cranked. And I'm so humble for my team. Thank you, my team. Thank you for my followers in the world. It's unbelievable and we're taking care of men that are suffering. But the, the pandemic is is not going to go away tomorrow. We don't know what to do. I, if we had a perfect world, we would keep everyone away and home and isolated because that's the primary way, social distancing. If you stay there and I'm here and you're never going to get this. But we need, to, we need to open up our economy safely, you know, and it doesn't mean we, we, we run into the streets and just rip open shops and restaurants you know i i take care of restaurant owners what about gym owners you know so this is not going to be easy Vlad. this is not going to be easy there's there's about data we don't have the scientific data you know when you see these you see these guys on tv you know they're op opening up the gyms and they're, they're doing civil disobedience i mean i have respect for these gym owners have you seen that I was going to ask you because do you think under the current circumstances the gym should be considered essential business and should be open or do you think it makes sense to just keep them closed down for now because it's very easy to spread you know the disease there I think. Now Vlad of course I think gyms are essential because it's all where you come from. <laughs> I'm a gym guy. I'm seeing depression. But we've already seen one person kill themselves Vlad. One person that everyone knows in the fitness world, right? That man had depression and it looks like he killed himself. What pushed him over the edge? You know, keeping him vital was training. Am I right, Vlad? I mean, this man killed himself. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. I, I, you know, I don't have too much information about that, but it, it, the reports came in that it was a suicide, but, you know, we never know what caused it, but. Correct, correct. So I'm talking to people all day long my patients, Vlad, and you know, men that do consults. I do consults all day, sometimes three or four, maybe five, all over the world. Men are irritated and depressed. These are gym goers. So to answer your question, I think gyms are absolutely essential. I think they're essential. I think they need to open 
but they need to open obviously appropriately. And I don't own a gym. I never have. I don't know what that means. You know, sanitation. Are people going to be training with barriers between them? This is not easy, Vlad. There's no one. This is why it's so politicized. No one's going to answer that question. Gyms are, to me, are essential. And, you know, staying healthy and not getting sick is essential. And guys like me and you probably won't get hurt from this, but we could spread it to someone in our house that, that, that could die and get hurt. No, I agree with you. Absolutely. Um, in your opinion, right, um, guys who would take steroids for bodybuilding purposes, are they more prone to getting hurt from the virus? Are, there, are their immune well, systems absolutely stronger not. or weaker for that, for that, you know, in that There's regard? No, I did. I, please watch my video. I, when, the, when this epidemic started, I, cr I, cr I cranked a video on that. And I did a lot of research on that. Anabolic steroid users, we don't have enough data. Anabolic steroid users are young and otherwise healthy, and anabolic steroid use does not compromise the immune system. No. I don't see, so why do I know that? Well, I'm the anabolic doc. I've been openly taking care of men on steroids, Vlad, since when? I've been 2003. All, all time. 2003, I've seen thousands upon thousands of men. They don't get sick. They don't get sick. And this, we don't need to do a study because I'm the doctor. They don't go to doctors with head colds. They don't get the flu. They don't get HIV any more than anyone else that takes risks and IV drug users. And what do, what do steroid users do? And I won't make this my platform, I promise. They die from heart disease psychiatric issues, potentially sexual issues, not dying, and kidney disease, the heart and the kidney, they do not, they do not have a compromised immune system from anabolic steroids. It's not corticosteroids. And I, I differentiate corticosteroids from anabolic steroids in my video. Prednis you know what corticosteroids are, right? Prednisone? Okay, those compromise the immune system because that's what they're meant to do to push the immune system down because it's overreacting to something. So anabolic steroids absolutely do not compromise the immune system. Do you think um, people that take anabolic steroids can actually be maybe uh, a better shield of defense against the virus or it doesn't play any role at all? No, it, it may play a role. But that we would need studies on. You see, Vlad, that is such a technical question that can you differentiate a healthy person from someone who's healthy on steroids that you'd have to you understand that's a great question. And my feeling in that is no, no, but they're not they're not they're not comp they're not compromised, but they're not any more protected, Vlad. Right. Got it. Um, now, you know, you and I have been <clears throat> working on uh, various film projects, right? We did a. Quite a few of them already. We're actually working on bigger Rex here right now together. Um, you know, and you always uh, obviously gave great interviews in the films. I always appreciative of that. But obviously, you've always criticized the use of anabolics for for bodybuilding purposes. You you kind of you made your point very clear on that. Um, but you're also a fan of bodybuilding, so you're present in the bodybuilding community, right? Do you ever get backlash for your opinions when you? Go on a platform and you say, you know, well, this, you know, this is terrible. It's going to kill you. It's going to give you bad side effects. Don't take it. Um, do you get backlash for that? No, but let, let, let me tweak your words. And Vlad, thank you for all the all the media. And we ha we have so much fun together. Or more is happening with me, and um, I love where I'm. Where I'm. At. It's all about good karma, and you're definitely a guy that supports that. And thank you. So, I don't criticize bodybuilders for taking steroids, Vlad. I'm gonna tweak, I'm gonna tweak this a little bit. And, and I'm not a bullshit guy. I have used steroids, I'm a power lifter. There's a difference in powerlifting and bodybuilding and I know you know that because you feature some of these strong guys. So I say, I say to this world that I love and I, I am amazed and I'm so impressed by because I'm one of them to better yourself. If you're gonna use steroids, be careful, Vlad, because they're guaranteed is going to be side effects. Will they kill you? Well, those are my studies. So I do take a backlash, Vlad. You know, I do. I do get hammered for that. 
And then I say, guys, yeah, I did steroids. And I'm on TRT and I'm 55 years old. And boom, you know I'll go like that, Vlad. My heart's in great shape. But hold on. I'm showing men that if indeed you use steroids, and this is a part for major league, I tap, I have some professional athletes that come on board. Woo, they're breaking, they're breaking contract laws. MLB, NFL, cyclists, oh, Vlad, I get a lot of consults. I, there's two types of patients. You're either a professional athlete and you're signing contracts, Vlad, or you're not. 99.9% .9 of my men, Vlad, that do consults with me, that trust me, they're not, con they're, they work, they're policemen, they're linemen, they work in for uh, NYSEG, the electric gas company, they're attorneys, they're doctors. A lot of doctors like steroids too. People, men, like to feel strong and be horny. They take the drugs and then something happens. I wanna give, I don't criticize these people. I love these people and I understand performance is awesome. You're either breaking a law, which is a contract law, or you're just a regular guy or a woman. So, right, Vlad, I do get criticized for that. So, did, was I clear? Did I differentiate that? No, absolutely. And it's also important to differentiate, you know, the, the, there's a steroid use that prescribed by a doctor to bring your levels to what we consider to be normal. That's, that's one thing. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about bodybuilding purposes use which is dosages are way, way more. The doctor would never prescribe that, right? We, you know. So let me, know so let me say, so, okay, let's, let's get into the nuts and bolts here for the, for the, for the viewers. Okay. A TRT, I prescribe TRT to men that need it. Let's define the terms, testosterone replacement. You're right. But the majority of my patients that come to me are middle age or younger, and they've already, they've destroyed their natural production. It's called anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. I'm not going to launch off into the scientific stuff. When men take steroids young and they cross a certain line, they, they, they don't naturally produce. That's why blasting and cruising, post-cycle therapy, we're working on the data. It may or may not help. So in the end of the day, let's go into it, Vlad. Professional bodybuilders. I love them. I take care of them. I don't hate on them. They're using massive doses, most likely. Let's be honest. Let's not name names. Depending on your genetics, the top pro bodybuilders and Ronnie, the, the absolute king. Let's not put Ronnie. Ron, you can give. You couldn't give. I couldn't take ten grams a week of gear. I'm never going to be like Ronnie. So there's these guys are incredible, but it is a slippery slope. They get involved with the drugs, every single one, and Vlad, they, they suffer. Come on, am I right or wrong, guys? I think a lot of them do, yeah. A lot of them do. Well, hold on. Every single one, every single one, when they're, when they're 23, 25, you're a freight train. But when you're 35 or 40, you may not hear, it's not publicized, although my videos, look at the comments, forget my videos, read my comments. These are men openly, openly explaining what's happened to them all over the world. When men are older, after 10 years or so of steroids, they're never going to produce natural testosterone. That's not suffer. That's not suffering. No, it is suffering, of course. And they have a host of medical issues that I see, from heart disease to strokes and hypercoagulable states and all this kind of arguing. These guys don't know their ass in the hole in the ground. I don't, there's things going on that I don't know that I talk to hematology doctors, nephrology doctors, cardiology doctors, endocrinology doctors. I'm hired to coordinate care for these men. Some of these cases are very complicated. Do you think there's ever um, a safer way to use steroids for bodybuilding purposes? Do you think there's ever, like, you're a doctor, I mean, you, know, you can't make a distinct statement like that, but do you think there's ever a safer use to, to use them? No, I, no, I don't. Because I understand the immune system, I understand the endocrine system medically, and I understand that we don't know. I understand that when a man takes even SARMs, young men, it shuts down your natural production. Let's go into the basics. Ready? Hypothalamus, your brain runs your testicles. I'm not sure a lot of men are not aware of that. The bro science guys, man, you guys are smart. I'm amazed. But you're not doctors. But whatever you do for a living, that's not what I do. I'm humble. But I've been looking at this for so many years. When you take an exogenous androgen, 
it's going to, sh- your brain is going to, and then depending on how long your brain sleeps and what you've done, your, your, your testicles won't come back. So how can I recommend there's a safe way guys? I wish there was, there's no safe way. It's all about how much risk you're willing to take cross this line cross this line, do a cycle, do a little test, do a little Anivar, do a little Primo, do all these different Ligandrol and SARMs, which I'm learning these too, because no one knows what these are. They're 100% in the streets. And then we see different outcomes. I did it, you know, a guy will say, doc, I did a couple cycles, you know, for a couple of years on and off just for the summer, maybe twice a year. And I was able to come off and eh, I could feel it, but I was okay. Sex, we're talking sexually, sexually. And then how his energy and his brain, if he has depression underlying, you're, 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 you're playing with fire. Not no men. Why I'm so busy is because men come to me confidentially and it's, it's true. You can't take steroids safely and think you're not going to get shut down. Uh, So, but that's true, but it doesn't mean that I don't love you and care for you for doing it. And I understand what you're doing in the end of the day, you're going to be on testosterone for the rest of your life. Now, hold on guys go doc. Who can I like it doc. Okay. And then my, what I accept is once you're on testosterone for life, I make sure that you don't suffer the side effects, cardiovascular wise, kidney wise, fertility wise, emotionally wise, sexually wise. This is a bit, this is a very complicated testosterone So, so men say, doc, stop hating. We like steroids. Help us out so we don't suffer. Now, you know what? Okay, I took an oath. If you're on pain medicine, you should not suffer, right? If, if your sexual orientation is what it is, you shouldn't suffer. You should not get discriminated upon. So now we've entered a point in the world where millions of men are taking PEDS, they're suffering, and now physicians, thank God, agree, let's take care. We don't have to give a blessing. I don't have to write Anavar and Anadrol and, and, and a gram of test. I never compromise my medical license, but at the same time, why wouldn't you heal that person? Is it, po- is, it, is it possible to heal them if they continue bodybuilding and taking those dosages, high dosages here's what I'm I, talking about? Here's what I do. Vlad, you know, you always ask the best questions. Here's what I, here's what I do. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. Doc, I could see that you could take care of some guy who's got low T and mess himself up. That's a no brainer, Doc. Dr. O'Connor, how do you take care of a professional, actively professional, active, strong man, bodybuilder, powerlifter? Here's how I do it. The man comes in. Now he comes in online. I ask him, what can I do for you, sir? What's your chief complaint? That's a medical history. He tells me, doctor, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. Tell me your history, sir. He tells me his history. I listen to his history and then typically we go on and we look at his labs. We look at maybe he had something happen. Maybe he had a heart attack or maybe he's in the hospital, maybe his kidneys. Okay. And then I review all the medical information and Vlad, I say to the man in my assessment and plan, this is medical, this is medical. This is a, 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 every doctor does this. It's a chief complaint, history of present illness, medical history, family history, review of systems, labs, vital signs. And then I say to him, sir, my analysis, my analysis and plan is so on and so forth. You're, you're a professional, strong man. You're a bodybuilder. Look, here's your red blood cells. Here's your heart and kidney. Here's what I'm going to tell you as an expert. I'm going to give you a crystal ball. I do it in a loving and caring way. That's the difference from the other historic doctors, which those doctors are going by the wayside. And some of them are getting sued. There's some lawsuits out there, of course, because they're discriminating and they're getting caught. Okay. So, and they're getting nailed, which is awesome. So I say, sir, here's what you're looking at. Here's where you are. Here's what you, I would recommend. I'm amazed at you and I'm so impressed. But here's what I would recommend. You're gonna, your heart is gonna enlarge further or it's gonna enlarge. You're looking at cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, depression. You're gonna be at a certain point, if not already, reliant on testosterone forever. And your fertility, we have to work on that. And hey, yeah, HCG and all, okay. 
And he says, you know what they say? And the wife says, or the mother says, thank you, doctor. That's what I do. And if they decide to transition to physiologic testosterone, I could do that. You see that, Vlad? Most of them don't because they're like, so I'm, I'm known from 10 years ago to be a career wrecker. So I am the career wrecker. You know, but, but for, for, you know, I'm a career wrecker, but I'm a soft career wrecker. And so typically, so when I do see now, if a man has heart disease, I've developed protocols that I openly discuss on my videos on how, as you're on steroids, I could protect you. And I don't prescribe those steroids. Vlad, I'm never going to lose, a doctor is never going to lose his medical license for, 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 I recommend that the patient not do what he does. Despite that, he's going to do it. And I, what's that? It's their decision. What, what, what are they going to do? You know? So, so if you're going to use, let's, let's use some obvious examples, opioids. So I was trained in New York City and Hartford, Connecticut. I'm well experienced. So and a, per, a man comes in or a woman on opioids. You, you offer them help. Unfortunately, most times they're not gonna, going to, they're going to try their best, but they're suffering with a disease and an addiction. Okay. So w- would you, the next time that person comes in the emergency room or your clinic, are you going to say, get the fuck out of this clinic? I told you, get off the, I, I, I rest my case. I rest my case. I, and the, the, does, it, does the doctor write for heroin? He actually, he actually may write for methadone, okay, or, or a weenie or suboxone. I have so many men on suboxone. I don't write suboxone. I don't write opioids. I have not written for an opioid in years. I don't do that. I'm an expert testosterone I don't do primary care anymore. But because I was a primary care doctor, I learned how to deal with people and don't discriminate. Don't doctors say to steroid users, get the fuck out of here. They, they, they do some of them. And, and that's why they're getting sued. So I don't give a blessing on steroids. I assess every man and I, I offer recovery therapy, evidence-based for fertility, protect the heart, protect the kidney, and potentially transition to testosterone. But is this understood though, Vlad? I know it's complicated. I don't, so I take care of, I try, I know that the high level steroid use is going to cause side of, uh, cause disease. So in my heart and professionally, I have to say, Hey man, let, let me show you what, and so many men do listen to me, not the first time, but they come back. And they come and they say, doctor, let me surrender to you. And you know what? I did my job. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot, of the, a lot of the guys who watch, um, and girls who watch Generation Iron, you know, uh, follow our projects, they are as- aspiring bodybuilders. You know, they, a lot of them are at the beginning of their careers. And, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of them assume for them to succeed, they got to get on um, steroids, right? At some, at some point when they're ready for it. Um, so what advice would you give to those, to those people? Because obviously they want to make a name for themselves. They want to compete, you know, they want to, they want to become, you know, popular bodybuilders and they want to achieve, uh, uh something in their career. So what advice do you give them in, the, in this situation? Because, you know, on one hand there's, there's a, there's a medical, obviously reasons why not to take it out. Right. But then there yeah. is, you know, they love the sport. They want to grow in a sport. And, you know, they have, they probably have a coach or something and, and they want to do it safely, but whatever, safely is obviously a very, uh, confusing term, but what advice do you give to those guys who are just getting into this business and who are ready to take that step forward? You know, it's very straight. I love that. And we got it. What a, what a question you're focusing on a question. So my channel anabolic doc is all about providing people with open education on what can happen from steroids. Vlad, these men and, and rarely women, I don't want to work with women, but women sometimes do their hour consults. And I'm never going to prescribe testosterone for a woman, so please don't ask. But for a man, maybe I will if it fits, if it's correct. Vlad, I, I explain to them there's no possible right way to do it. All those pros that you see suffer at some point in their life, but then no one publicizes this. 
until they end up having a heart attack. And we're not going to go into names and whatever. So here's the, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I say to them, be careful, be careful. You know, people, I take care of NASCAR drivers. You don't think that's dangerous? Very dangerous. Nas very dangerous. Okay. So, so uh, it, it's all, it, it's spiritual. It's very spiritual. I understand it's an adrenaline. I understand what you want to do. I did it to a part. And then I got off the bus and I'm on TRT for life. <laughs> 20 years. Okay. So is I say, it, let me, I, I say to them, I, I have to do it on an individual basis. I can't lump this because I, I get into the person individually. I see really what they want to do, where they're coming from. Do they, are they perfect? They're probably doing something else. They're, they're not getting the, their day job is not bodybuilding at this point. So what do you do? What do you like to do? Where do you come from, man? What I get into the history and I get into the brain and they trust me. And I say, maybe you, so you, are you willing to take these risks? I, that's what I do. And you know what? Some of them just go on and say, thank you, doctor. And I show them some, sometimes I find medical diseases, genetically congenital disease. I say, man, whoo, you, you're definitely going to hit a road on this real, a roadblock real quick. And then, and, and uh, so don't do it. If I find, but most people, 25 year old man comes in 23, 30, and I say, you know, you're a healthy guy. So you will be potentially destroying a perfectly healthy body. Oh, but I, I, I certainly understand the motivation, but it's, do you want to do that? Do you want, and, and you may suffer kidney die. I have, I have dozens and dozens of men in dialysis right now. You know what that is? You know what dialysis is? Yes. Yeah, really hook up the machine to you, right? Correct. They don't look good. They don't feel good. There's a lot of depression. I deal with depression all day long. And they say, doc, I fucking did this to myself. And th was it worth it? And some men, very famous men, you know, say it was worth it. And I don't, I don't hate him for that. You know, you know who I'm talking about. He said it was worth it. And that's sexy and great for films, but it's open media. I don't criticize that. But People focus on that for the adrenaline. They focus on that for the dream. And this is what our world is about. And that's a, this is a beautiful world, Vlad. So it's how much risk would you like to take, sir? On average, um, on average, I, I know there's obviously, there's always uh, special cases, but on average, how soon can a bodybuilder starting taking steroids can expect seeing real health complications and what are the most common ones that that they should be expecting and how soon from when they first started doing it god vlad these are this is the best interview in the world possibly so the, the 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 problem is young bodybuilders are healthy and it doesn't the problems don't come uh, they sometimes don't come for two, 20 years and so so but but some of them will and there's so many factors what is your underlying medical history? How much steroids are you doing? What else are you doing? Do you have depression? Do, do you have underlying genetics for early heart disease and kidney disease? So yes, what I see early is a, a man that has just bad genetics, which is bad luck, and then he doesn't know and then he uses steroids and he says, how come the, I did, oh, how did I have a heart attack at 28 or 35 or a DVT clot or something? Or how did I, how, this guy over here did, sir, fingerprints, it's fingerprint medicine. And then, but at a certain point, so it, it mostly, the, the blessing and the curse is you don't hurt a healthy body overnight. That's a blessing. That, that's a blessing. But it's a curse because it's a slippery slope and young men are, they don't see, you know, this men that go to war and, and uh, again, uh, again, and men that play football, men that do jump out of airplanes, men that are warriors. I have these men. These are incredible, high intensity, adrenaline driven men. This is the same man that does bodybuilding and powerlifting and strong man. These are adrenaline driven men. The drugs come into play because they tell me, doctor, I have to use the drugs because I'm chosen. I have great genetics. 
I hear it. I've been doing this since 2003. And, you know, and it gets better and better every day, more humble every day, because I understand what doing. It's a slippery slope. And, but so, so it's insidious. It's insidious and it takes time. It depends on who you are. And the most complicated, the most, excuse me, common disease I see is of the heart and the organs in the kidney. So it's safe to assume that, that when, whenever in life you'll get those side effects is depending purely on your genetics. It, it depends on your, on your health. Multi, correct, correct, multifactorial. Come on, it's who you are. I mean, some guys take a gram of testosterone, they don't get estrogenic. Wow, no gynecomastia. And then I have guys who take a little, I have lawyers who take a little androgel and their boobs, whoosh, and they can't take it because, or they get roid rage. They get so aggravated, they want to like kill the client or the judge. That's not good. And that's just because of androgel. And then you have another guy that sits back and takes two grams of test or a gram of test and sits back like this. And I go, hey, man, how do you feel? You're on two grams of test. And he goes, huh? Wow. I feel great, doc. Come on. Come on, variability. It's so people are different. Now you've often um, criticized coaches, gurus, right? People that you know give advice to the bodybuilders who don't have doctor degrees, basically, right? So, do you think those guys should be held responsible for the health of the athletes, even though they're not doctors? You know what I mean? Like, what should be the protocol of the relationship between uh, the coach, who's not a doctor, right, who's just a coach, and the athlete? What should be the, what, what, what's well, the right way to do this really? I have to be careful with this <laughs> because I'm going to be transparent and tell you that a lot of the world's not simple. This is not, this is a political question. You're asking me a very politically charged question. I have a lot of gurus who send me patients and they know, they, they say, doc, I know that I'm, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm not a doctor and I'm, t I'm telling men and women to take all these drugs that are dangerous drugs. And the majority of them are prescription based in the last 50 years. Some of them are, some of them are, are, are veterinarian drugs, equipoise and Tren and all these, and they're recommending these, these protocols that are so complicated diuretics and SARMs and fertility, SARMs, SERMs, diuret diuretics, and they're, they're hurting people. So the gurus, to, this is a message to the coaches and gurus, you, you are, you're not a doctor, and you're doing something that's so dangerous, but there's a huge vacuum because doctors don't do it there's a vacuum and because of digital social media, Vlad, you see where I'm going with this. So there's a, and there can be a lot of money made. So let's, let's talk about politics. These, I got to be careful. I'm against it. You're not a doctor. You're giving medical advice without being a doctor. I don't know that there's been any arrests or litigation, but be careful when and if it starts, if one of these guys or women are the daughter or son of a big political person, which I've seen some near misses, I take care of a lot of VIPs, I've seen some near misses, and I could tell you that there, there has been some litigation against some of these gurus and coaches. They're, 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 giving, they're giving open information about steroid use on this right here. They're doing it on this. It's a lot of you, like, you, you can trace you can trace a lot of that stuff back if they really wanted to, right? So there, there's been I've already seen I've already seen I should say attempted liability where these guys had to get Rick Collins, <laughs> you know, the steroid lawyer, and it's it's ratcheting up. And when when the moons line up and that senators or congressman or policeman's son dies or gets hurt or, and then they get, they get the phone and they see the guru giving equipoise and trend and all this medical advice for danger. Um, there is a, you know, the law that, that out, that, that made steroids a controlled substance in the 1990s. Listen to me, gurus. 
it implicates non-medical people, anyone giving advice or coercing someone, it's a felony. So it, it, it's a potential felony. And now with social media and emails, they can get that data so easily and track you. They're, you're running a risk legally. I've seen a lot of gurus getting out of the business. I think because, let me tell you what, you open a can of worms with me. Uh, they, they're good men. They're good men. These are all ideal just with men. They're good men. They, they inherently, they're making money. They're high. They're high on knowledge they know they know a lot about the underground use the bros it's called bro science i'm not going to get on my high horse and say you're not a fucking doctor and this and that but you're not there's things i don't know i obviously can't give this information and i wouldn't a lot of these men feel bad because they're hurting people at least they're hurting men these men are coming to me it's really it's really ironic that they're giving all this this medical advice to men and hurting them and shutting them down. And then then at the same time, they, they're sending them to me because this guy, the guru, looks at the labs and the labs look like ho- horrific. Everything is blacked out that's abnormal. Red cells, kidney, liver, you name it. And then the guy just goes, now these, the and we know there are some guys that, I, that I'm absolutely against that, that gives straight up medical information because he went to med school for one year. That's a buffoon. Uh, that's, a, you know, Vlad, how can, how can people do this? I would say you're giving medical advice. You're hurting people. How can you do it? Business is booming for me. Thank you very much. That's pathetic. You know, I don't mean to defend anybody, but, you know, I talk to a lot of different gurus, right? And they always make a case that they have years of experience, hands-on experience, right? So they experimented, manipulated with different substances, and they have a hands-on experience. They're not doctors, of course, right? So when you hear that uh, response, you know, what, what would you say to that? They don't know their ass from the hole in the ground. How about, you know, I usually don't make, I usually don't give simple responses. How about that one for a simple, they, they, they don't know what they're doing. It's, it's, it's a shell game. It's called snake oil on steroids and their day's going to come. And you know what? You never hear about karma. You know, karma, karma, bad karma, buddy. They're giving, there's no possible way to give medical advice when you're not a physician about heavy dude androgens and think everything, they're young. I told you the reason why it looks like it's okay is because these are young, healthy bodies that have a huge threshold and you don't see the disease until years. And most people keep their mouth shut and they don't blow the guru in. They blow the guru into me and I keep my mouth shut about the names. Um, do you think in bodybuilding industry, fitness industry, we hear a lot about, you know, people like men having health complications at like 40s, mid 40s, late 40s, you know, heart attacks, something like heart, you know, heart related problems. Um, do you think it's a rampant problem within the industry or do you think because of the spotlight that media companies put in, you know, like we cover it, whatever, or other companies cover it. Um, do you think it's just basically like one bad apple can spoil the bunch, you know what I'm saying? Or do you think it's a rampant problem? No, it's a, it's a Vlad. It's a huge problem. This is my day. This is my my whole industry, and I'm training. I'm training other doctors to do this because I have a waiting list a mile long. I get. I'm getting five consults a day sometimes. Five every day all around the world. So it's it's a massive problem. What can I say? Thank you for asking me the question and having me on the show. I'm be, I'm trying to be polite because I'm actually very aggressive. I'm a half Jew from New York City. I'm an Irish Jew from New York City. I'm a very aggressive person, sir. And I will tell you, I've been doing this for a long time. The disease and, and the, 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 what I'm, the hurt is off the page, but it's complicated and it's not gonna go away. So I lay down the salt and the sugar. I, I, you, you get more love with, I, I'm aggressive to the gurus and the coaches because I have to be. But please, thank you for sending me your patients or your your their patients, your men. 
And, and you know, I'm trying to, to do this thing. Pro- what can I possibly do? Vlad, if you knew something's really, really wrong in your heart, it, it, it's, it's called honor and ethics, and karma. How can you not say anything about it? How can you not? So the truth is, this is, this is because of social media. This thing is so incredibly, so be out of control. It's been out of control for, it's not going to end. It's, it's a disease, big orexia. There's this, there's this line of where it's healthy and it's, it's, it's healthy and it's good and it's competitive and st- all these amazing, beautiful. And then there's that fine line, isn't it? But then it's really not a fine line, you know, and, and some people look like they can do steroids for, for quite some time and a, certainly a, a, lot, a large amount of them and appear to look quite well. You know what that's called? Good luck. Good luck. You know, I hear a lot of horror stories about synthol use. And I'm not talking about like extreme synthol use where the people have no muscle, they just put synthol in their arm. I'm talking about like, you know, a bodybuilder, let's say, want to enhance a certain body part. And then the horror story basically is that, you know, it messes up their look or or sometimes it can, can even be very dangerous for the health if you inject it wrong, right? So what happens if, you know... Um, have you seen a lot of those cases and how do you, like, is it, does it eventually, like when you, when you say inject synthol in your bicep, right? And I say it doesn't look good after that. Does it, after a few years, does it go away or like what happens to, to those body parts that are affected by the shot? I, I, you know, I don't see too much of this, but I've seen it and I see it from time to time and I don't know who's doing it. You know, the pros I know do it very carefully and they have to have someone, boy, that's like a plastic surgeon that's doing that injection, right? You know, so that's a that's a, a technician. And you look at Rich, that wasn't synthol, that was another you know, plastic derived polymer, you know, written rich piano. That wasn't that was not synthol. So I I've seen that being used too, you know, and that's used openly, you know, for gluteal and, and you know, for gluteal enhancement in uh, South America. And again, I'm not I'm not putting anything down. So but synthol is, is not, you know, synthol you goes in and it, it, it it's it's uptaken and, and uh, the body absorbs it, right? Reabsorbs it over time. And I've seen, so what, what happens? I did video on that. It, it you can get in fact, you, if look at the synthol kid, right? So that's an extreme case. That's an extreme case, right? That's an extreme, a massively extreme case. And the, you know, the guys in South America, which my Lord, what's going on, you know, but in here too, I've seen it here. So infections, number one, I want to give you the medical response infections, because you're, you're really, it's not just a testosterone injection, which really the muscle kind of absorbs readily. You can get a cellulitis from that. I've had patients, as you and I have suffered with massive complications from cellulitis and even have been septic, you know, and, and, and almost died in the hospital for weeks on end. And so I've seen, I've, so I see this all the time, usually from just ster- from steroid in, injections. So synthol is it's amazing it, it could it, it can just infections there, there are neurologic complications i've seen guys where they've lost now they have you know no sense of of they have numbness and they have lost uh, motor ability because it's affected a peripheral nerve you know i had to send a neurology and neurosurgeons and it's scar tissue and you know the complications of scar tissue infections Rich may have had some of that stuff infiltrate his heart, and that's why he had a dead, deadly arrhythmia, you know, beyond the the, the 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 amphetamines and the insulin, you know, that he dropped. And no one's no one's going to know. No one's going to know. And and but beyond that, yes, yeah, synthol is, you know, but the the sight enhancement stuff. The the more the bigger picture to me is that the big orexia. Why would you know? I, I I'm not putting these guys down, but you know, in my era and stuff, you know, apart from Greg Valentino, <laughs> you know, and we all love Greg, you know, Greg is an expert in this. I'm not saying Greg used it. I'm just saying Greg knows a lot about it. But like, you know, we just we just take. I'll just take that little, you know, whatever I got. I I don't know how anyone would want that, but you know, the lem- remember the lemmings, the lemmings going to the sea. It, it there's there's social conscience and there's cultural norms and changes. As people start to do things, you look around in your peers and you say, yeah, that's something you could do that. You can, your delts can look better. And it's a, it's a high, you know, so people are using this, I think, to a degree. But most guys that come into the anabolic doc, they have that stuff. They're just regular guys who like to do some D-ball, antidrol, test, you know, get big and strong. 
other guys come into me, then they they <laughs> they have a medical complication again, like I talked about, or they worry about it and they want to get off dock. I'm here because I'm getting ready. I want to get off the train. I want you help get get me off the train. Those that's my common guy. So synthol, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's that's pretty extreme stuff. So. Do you think, you know, after, you know, it's a great conversation we're having, but do you think the industry, all of us collectively, should be promoting um, natural bodybuilding more? Uh, you know, we're working on a film right now. It's, it's you know, it's about natural bodybuilding. I've been to a few different shows, you know, and we filmed at a, a lot of different events. And, of course, the scale is much, much smaller. You know, it's, you can clearly see it, you know. And, of course, you know, it's not publicized as much. The athletes in this organization are not as, not as well known. Um, but do you think we collectively, you know, should be pushing the agenda of natural bodybuilding or do you think it's just not going to ever become as popular, be, you know? I'm going to be honest with you. It's not going to happen. People want to see the big people. I, I told you it's adrenaline and adrenaline is tied to serotonin and dopamine. People want to see it. I, I'm, I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying People want NFL football, you know, orthopedic surgeons. I know some of these professional guys that are actually patients of mine. These guys sit in the sidelines and wait for injury. Am I right or wrong? Which guys? The, the, we, we, the professional NF, orthopedic surgeons that are on the sidelines of NFL games. Okay. So some, someone a long time ago said, Doc, you, you know, someone put you down like you're making money on this. You're promoting this. What? And, and the guy, one of the guys responded in the thread and he said, the doc is like an NFL. I mean, when you go to an NFL game, the orthopedic surgeon is going to come on. So here's what's happening. People, thank you. Thank you for covering natural bodybuilding, giving people an alternative. You give an alternative and I give an alternative and then I, I educate on them what could happen. And when something happens, I will rush in to protect you. So it's never going to go away because NFL is not going away, which is, I'm glad it's not. I love NFL. So extreme sports, NASCAR, and this stuff is not going to go away. Can we make it safer? That's what I, I'm looking into research on that. And uh, we're not there yet. I'm not there for today. I say I have to I have to warn against it. And then if you do harm yourself, like an opioid doctor is going to work on or anyone else or an orthopedic surgeon, I will rush in to help you and to limit the suffering that you've caused to yourself. But in the future, you're going to see more. And it's not going to go away because remember the remember what I said in one of your movies. Remember the Romans. It's a, it's, it's so, but, but you, thank you for, and I like to see the, the, the movement of natural and I have take, I've taken in natural natty bodybuilders. You know what? That some of them are on test boosters and they consider those of natural and their testosterone's in the garbage. So I don't know. We don't from, know what from, test bo boosters. from boosters from taking. Like yeah. I, I've seen, I've seen like a very half, maybe a handful over the, you know, the 10 year period. It is interesting. And it looks like I look at the test and think, Doc, how can this tribulus and all these test boosters? I've never done steroids, no pro hormones, no SARMs. And but my T is low, like I did use those. So we it is crazy. And like again, that's part of my research we're working on. Like, what are these agents? How do they work in the brain? What do they do to the brain to shut it down? Not to mention, what do they do to the heart? How do we work? I'm working with, you know, I, I'm always working with expert kidney doctors. I'm trying to limit suffering because these men are into various degrees of kidney failure. You know, I feel bad for um, a lot of the natural bodybuilders, especially the ones that are, you know, they, they actually don't cheat. They, they, they say the natural and actually fully not. Because I know a lot of those guys actually take stuff, you know, behind the closed doors. But, you know, yeah. that's a different story. But, you know, the, the ones that actually stay natural, uh, I feel bad for them because on one hand, you know, you have them following the path, listening to guys like you, to other people that criticize, you know, the use of PEDs to a certain extent, and they want to be, you know, on the right path according to them, right? But they just, but on the, on the other hand, people say, yeah, we, we think steroids are bad, but we don't want to see a natural show. You know what I mean? And it's like, what, what, what are they supposed to do? You know what but I mean? Here, but here's the deal though. The natural guy, there's no free lunch. I told you that. And think of spiritualism and energies in the world. The natural bodybuilder goes out 
after the show and has a, a burger and a glass of wine or something or a drink like the regular guy does, like the steroid user does too. And, but guess what? The natural guy goes to sleep. His organs are fine. So, so the natural guy, don't feel sorry for him. He's not going to, he's not going to get hurt. No, I know right? that. I know, of course. But I mean, as far as him getting recognition for his, for his craft, for his physique. Right in circus, Romans, bread and circus, Romans, NASCAR, adrenaline, NFL. We want big. We want strong. We want crazy. Mixed martial arts, brother. People want it, man. So you're bringing, you're the media guy and you're, it's, it's not something that it's, my mother says, it's not something she says that's good or bad. Of course, steroid use is bad. It's something that is, it just is. So we, the powers to be, should absolutely, if we can, soften the blows and give alternatives and as you are to the best. Because if that's that one person or a group that says, you know what, I, I'm really turned on by that, that natural bodybuilding, and that's good enough for me as I'm an accountant, as I'm, you know, a cop or I, I and I really don't want to go to the to the you know the dark side and but I'm not hating on those guys. You know what guys come in who that are natty, they go, Doc, I don't hate, or they say, when I turn from natty to, to, to non-natty, which is such a subjective, you know, they, they think I'm not, I'm natty. I'm just on test or the guys that are cruising and they're, I'm natural. You, you're not natural. You're on 200 milligrams of testosterone. That's not natural. It's not much, but it's not natural. So, but in, in the end, when, when you, I hear these guys, they don't, they say, doc, I don't hate on the pros. I'd love to be one of them, but doc, I don't have the balls to do it. It's amazing. I hear you, man. That's, that's, that's an interesting uh, response, right? Because <laughs> yeah, I got to come up with some new stuff for all you guys because you ask me the same questions. I I gotta I gotta be more progressive, you know. <laughs> yeah. So what about um, you know the the drug test that they give right for steroids? Um, is it easy to beat that test in your in your opinion? Because I hear like if you eat like certain edible steroids, they don't show up in a urine test. I mean, how is it, in your opinion is it easy to beat that test? Well, the, the the drug test, I really don't know. You know, I'm an anabolic doc, but and I get consults of professional athletes asking me about the drug testing, and I just I'm just going to tap out on that one. I don't know. I, I think that the urine, you know, the, the you know the IOC testing and all this stuff and is really good. It's really, really, I'm not good. It's good. It's I'm a good or a bad. It's they're, they're very accurate and boy, man, it's going to be hard to beat testing. So, you know, NCAA, when indeed they do test, I do so many consults. You know how many consults I do on amateur, but regulated amateur athletes, NCAA, and even some Olympic guys that are on the Olympic, they come to me to contest something. You know, and I, again, I tap out on that because I am not a lawyer. You know, I'm not, I'm not a testing expert, you know, and doc, this, this was a false positive. It was, you know, we figured, we found that this agent was actually stimulating and that, that, that that's legal. That's a legal, that's a bio legal question, but the, the bodybuilders, let's be straight profession, IFBB. There's no, there's no drug testing. There's never going to be drug testing, right? No. Yeah, I'm talking about other like organizations track that, that, field, that track do. and field. Yeah. So yeah, so track and field, you know, NCAA and Olympic level, which I do talk to, and different, you know, amateur and and professional levels of, you know, biking. I have the bike, you know, the road bike guys, right? Even some mountain professional mountain bike guys, they're getting into steroids now. Why? Because it makes you strong as shit, and it makes you recover. Right. And, and not to mention, you feel great. So and I see them, some of them getting busted and they come to me and I just say, you know, you, you did some Andrew gel. I mean, it didn't get out of your system. Your buddy said it would be out of your system in three days or a week. And it wasn't, you know, what am I going to tell? I don't know. I mean, Anovar, you know, Probe, you know, short acting, um, you know, these guys think it's going to some of them beat it and some don't. It's you're kind of throwing it down the dice. I don't I don't really understand the, the testing. I, I'm not I'm not a. A testing expert. It's very complicated. This technology is very complicated. It's funny you mentioned uh, cycling because that whole Neil Armstrong story always amazed me. You know what happened to him? It's it's kind of a crazy story because they took away his titles, right? For all the all those uh, 
Yeah, I know. I know a lot of. I know some of the people around him. I, he got he got busted because you know it's funny he got busted with a big mouth. I think, you know, he was kind of cool and laid back, and you know, it's it's, it's just like the other guys. You know, Barry Bonds, right? It's funny that you know, they piss, you piss off the wrong person in life, and they drop dimes on you. They come back, and that that's how that's how Armstrong, you know, Lance Armstrong got nailed with that in the end, because they came up with a polymer in the bag that proved that he took a transfusion of blood. That's incredible. That was a polymer in the bag, plastic polymer. He didn't get busted with. Well, the crazy thing is, whoever they gave the the title to the champ, you know, the championship title, they probably use it also because it's it's rampant in a in the cycling world, right? So I've had in the last four, three or four months, I've had a couple of, you know, I'm getting some, I'm I'm breaking out of the bodybuilding powerlifting world, which is awesome for me because I was get, not getting bored, but it's just like, oh my god, can I get some new guys coming in? Which is which is okay. So they came in. I was like, wow. And then one of the guys, you know, he, he, there was a documentary on him and I watched it, you know, by some big documentary and wow. And I talked to that guy. So, um, man, I mean, look, these are incredibly gifted athletes, but certainly back in the nineties and the early two, 2000, 2005, you know, they were, these guys were all on gear now and EPO, you know, EPO, you know, blood transfusions isn't it crazy i mean like i don't i'm not a professional biker i'm a, i'm an ex power lifter just a i'm just a knuckle dragon yard ape guy you know strong guy i like to be strong and get high so it's like these guys are incredible but the, the drugs are they doing it now i don't know i mean because the testing yeah i don't the testing is super tight super tight testing that's what that's what, he told me that he said you know now it's pretty natty, he said, and I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's completely wrong. That would be a great research. You should do you should do something on that. But they're testing. They're tight. The testing is really, really tight. Mm. So uh, you know, we'll cover a lot of different things today. I want to ask you one more question about nutrition, right? Because nutrition is 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 a huge part of bodybuilding, right? Uh, now, for instance, you know, the whole organic foods, like organic chicken, organic meat, you know, I heard it's a kind of a scam because it's really doesn't make any difference in products. I mean, in your opinion, what, what do you think about organics and, 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 the, and the price difference between the products? Because you can get like a, a lot of chicken for very, very cheap, you know what I mean? Or you can get very little for a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? There's a big discrepancy in products. In your opinion, does it make a difference how expensive the I food is? I think it might. You know, so I, I know a lot about lipidology which is really a subdivision of cardiology and you know, the, the lipid, the plaque inside the coronary artery, the heart disease. So there's a, there's a discipline called lipidology. So I know a lipidologist and I interviewed him on my, on my show and he, he actually recommends, you know, he's more into the keto, you know, this is all based on data, you know, this is preventing heart disease, preventing heart disease. And he's, you know, carbohydrates are certainly poisonous. There's a lot, bunch of poisons in the world, you know, nutritionally and stuff. And, but he sees he's he feels that the you know the carbs are the poisonous and I think I agree with him but it's not so clean it's not so cleaned out you know but should you live on complete animal fats and animal meats you know 24 seven and keto and all this I don't know I just can't have an answer but he does recommend that if you're gonna do you know animal meat animal proteins you know beef that he says go organic because it's it's he feels it's gonna be the, the animals, if it's really true, right? That's There's what I'm no, saying, yeah. Yeah, so if it is true, I, I so I'm always a long-winded guy. I think it probably is good. I do buy the, the or I go for that area in the store, you know, that it that gravitates to that little, you know, the bison burger, and I'll look at that meat that's lean, and I'll see it's organic, and it's I know it's clean. You know, there's no hopefully there's no hormones in the way it's fed, right? So the feeding of the animal. So the answer is, I think it is true. But here's the thing. If you don't do it forever and you do it for a few months, which is great, kind of like diets. They're only going to be good if you do it forever. So don't call it a diet. Just call it good, you know, live the best you can and take medicines to protect yourself. That's what I'm all about. So I'm an internist. So I, I think if you if you do, you make an attempt at that, that's awesome. But, you know, then it's going to be kind of like supplements. Is it really, do you know where it comes from? And, and that's why some great supplement companies, and not, no names mentioned, they really do try to have their ingredients come 
from the best source and you pay for it, right? Sure. Makes sense. Uh, Dr. O'Connor, thank you so much, man. It's always great talking to you. <laughs> you Thanks, do, you do, always enjoy our conversation. Let's keep, let's, you know, let's keep making these happen like every few months or so, man. A lot of Definitely fun, man. enjoy talking to you, man. Thank you so much. And be safe, please, you know, stay safe out there. It's just sitting with me and you sitting like this, buddy. You know, it's a whole new world now. Thank you. You too, Glad. Thank you so much, doctor. I appreciate it. Thank you.